This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More about them later. Welcome to another behind the scenes video. Today we're going to be taking apart this donor Wii. Not going to leave that in there. And this is the one that's going to be used in the GameCube shell Wii project where I'm going to be taking the motherboard of this Wii and shoving it into a GameCube shell. And the point of that project is literally just because I thought it would be funny to troll all the people that kept complaining that I didn't use a Wii motherboard for the GameCube Mini because then I could have made it even smaller. And while that is true, I don't really care. I'm going to put a Wii motherboard, which can be extremely small, into a GameCube shell, which is extremely large, logically. And then I'm gonna kinda just run through all the different hardware that's in here. Um, if you've never seen the inside of a Wii before, it'll be slightly educational, and if you've seen one inside before, then, um, it's a good nostalgia trip, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna have to start with a little Phillips. Oh, we have gotten to the tri-wings. <laughs> These screws are actually no big deal. All you need is one of these little wacky uh, screwdrivers you can buy off eBay or Amazon. And a ton of Nintendo stuff uses this. So if you're going to be doing stuff like this, it's really good to have on hand. Okay, I couldn't really remember which of these feet was hiding screws, but it's these two right here um, along the bottom. Hidden screw holes in there. There's a couple of tri-wings that you gotta take out. Okay, so this compartment is where the BIOS battery lives, and this just keeps the date and time for the Wii. It's literally like a tiny little battery. Um, the same one that's on a motherboard for a PC. Um, and inside of here, it's, uh, is where you find out which revision Wii you have, if you don't want to look directly at the motherboard. But there's just a little code in there that lets you, uh, see which kind of revision Wii this is. And I, I'm able to read it here, and it says FB01, and I don't know off the top of my head which revision that is, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in in post for you guys to see. And if I remember correctly, there's some more sneaky little screw holes. Holy crap, that hit me in the face. But yeah, there's some more in here. There's a good mix of Phillips and Tri-Wing, weirdly. So now if you come around to the front panel, on this side, there are a couple more secret little screws, I'm pretty sure, under these stickers. Alright, looks like we got two Tri-Wing screws right there. Okay, front panel comes off now, and then there's a little plug that you can undo here. You gotta be a little careful taking this out. Shouldn't really be doing it by the wires like I'm doing. It doesn't really matter <laughs> for me because if it breaks, I can just resolder it back on, but obviously not everyone has that option. So you might wanna be careful with this. There we go. She gone. All right, so if I got everything else, then now it should just be a matter of taking the shell off, I believe. It's been a while since I've taken apart a Wii, so could be wrong. Could be a little more um, secret hiding places. Oh, you know what? There's one of these. Yep, yep, there's one right there. I always forget something. Now it comes right off. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hooray, my first sponsor. All right, let me tell you what PCBWay does. They specialize in prototyping and low volume production of printed circuit boards. You know, these things. They really are a one-stop shop for all your electronic prototyping needs. They do standard PCBs, advanced multi-layer HDI PCBs, flex PCBs, and the cherry on top is that they'll even give you the option to have them pre-assembled for you at their factory. And in addition to PCBs, they're also branching out into some new services that includes 3D printing and CNC machining. Personally, I am really excited to give those services a try, since I've always wanted to have the shells of my projects printed professionally. And CNC machining? Oh my god, it could open up a world of new options for custom heat sinks in my mini consoles. I am so excited that I get to work with PCBWay. New users get a $5 welcome bonus on their first order, and 10 PCBs are just $5, so it's literally just free. Plus, their build time is only 24 hours. Pre-assembly services start at $30 for 10, plus you get free global shipping. And if anything I talked about piqued your interest, head down to the link in the description to see what PCBWay can offer you. 
Oh my god, look at this fan. It's so freaking tiny. The GameCube fan is bigger than that. But anyway, we'll do a little bit of Wii anatomy here. So obviously, USB port 0 and 1. We've got the cooling fan, AV port, um, sensor bar jack, power jack, super basic. Um, there is a wireless antenna right here. One of these is Wi-Fi and one of these is Bluetooth. I don't know which one it is, but those are the wireless controller antennas for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth chips. And you do need the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips installed in order to get the thing to boot, but I'm pretty sure there are some mods that let you do away with those. Uh, however, I will probably be leaving them in because I want to leave the Wii as completely functional as possible for this mod. Okay, I can't seem to get this black shroud off for whatever reason. In the spirit of not being incredibly destructive, I'm gonna just leave it for now and move on to this shield. Okay, upon further inspection, it appears that this should just kind of come off. Yep, never mind. <laughs> not much to do there. And I actually took a couple screws out of the DVD drive on accident, so let me go ahead and put those back. Okay, so we are left with the DVD drive, some exhaust ducting, and the motherboard, which is under it. There's not much left to disassemble, I believe, although the Wii is so much more complicated than the GameCube. This is why I prefer the GameCube. It's just so much simpler to open up and do stuff to. Okay, so the DVD drive is loose, but I can feel that it's still connected by something, by a ribbon cable. I'm just gonna very carefully unplug that. Okay, there goes the power cable, and here is the data cable for the DVD drive. Let me go get, oh, is there, oh, <laughs> there was a screw in there. Oh, there's another screw in there. There we go. So let me go ahead and grab a GameCube shell real quick. I'm gonna do some brainstorming on how I might be able to fit this. Okay, so here's most of the shell of a GameCube. Here's the bottom half. Here's the top half. Come together like that. Bob's your uncle. So the idea, there's a couple ideas here. So we can take the DVD drive. Oh my God, wait, hold on. Oh, no way. Oh my God, it, it just fits. It actually just fits. No freaking way dude okay so hold on let me grab a disc i'm gonna see if we can put it in through the controller ports wait never mind hold on hold on i got ahead of myself we still need to have the controller port thing here uh because i want it to aesthetically look exactly like a gamecube on the outside but i feel like it's a good thing that this just fits in there god that fits perfect that's like it's supposed to be in there that's crazy it's like there's a lot of volume to the gamecube but there's also not at the same time because a lot of it gets taken up by this bottom portion and then by the disc loading mechanism. So there's actually like not a lot of room to work with in here. It's going to be tougher than I thought. Okay, so what if I just, I'm just kind of spitballing here. I'm just seeing what works. Obviously there's these pegs in the way that's going to stop this from working. I wonder if like this and then you put the games in through the hole. <laughs> I don't think it's quite there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a little tough. Okay, well, what if we can slim down the DVD drive? There might be some unnecessary junk in here that we can get rid of. Because if I can slim it down to the point that it'll fit in the footprint... Oh wait, but no, because we gotta put a full-size disc in here for uh, Wii games. Okay, so this is gonna be incredibly destructive, but what I could do is like bore out all of this so I have um, room to put it in there, and then I'll just Dremel a slot right there to put the DVDs in. And that's actually not a bad idea at all. It's just gonna like mega suck, because I'm gonna have to get rid of like all of this. Oh man, I don't even, I don't know if that's feasible. I can definitely lose some material on the drive itself. I can lose these mounting points for sure, because they just stick out. Other than that though, there's not much else I can get rid of here. 
Okay, so that is the incredibly destructive option. Maybe we could do that where it mounts front facing like that, but on the top instead. But there's all of this crap in here and I'd have to also Dremel out most of all this. I don't know if there's gonna be a way around not dremeling out a ton of shit. That just blows my mind how well this fits though, it's crazy. But we need those controller ports, so. And like I said, I wanted to include the DVD drive, but if it doesn't work out, then, you know, it doesn't work out. I don't even wanna play games from a disc, to be honest with you. I prefer USB and SD card loading so much more over optical media, man. It's just so much simpler. Well, simpler to me. A lot of people disagree on that. I don't know, maybe I'll brainstorm a little bit more about the disc. For now, let us get back to the board here. All right, we've got the other massive shield off now. Let's take a closer look at the board here. Let me, holy crap, <laughs> we're losing parts left and right. Let me go over um, what you guys are looking at here. Okay, so this is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth chip, one or the other, again, I'm not sure. This is also another wireless chip. I think this one's Wi-Fi and this one's Bluetooth. SD card slot right here. Here's the heat sink for the CPU and GPU, I believe. I don't know, I haven't taken it off yet. I actually haven't disassembled a Wii years, so I'm a little rusty. GameCube memory card slots, GameCube uh, controller ports. These are coming off, and I'm going to solder in the stock GameCube front plate, which has both of these. I'm just gonna solder all the connections to where they need to go on the board. That's pretty much it. I mean, miscellaneous electronics going on for power management, all that. Uh, man, this heatsink is real small though compared to the GameCube one. That's kind of nuts. It's like way smaller. But uh, anyway, let's keep going on our disassembly journey. Oh, okay, so it turns out that the uh, heatsink screws are the only thing holding the board into the rest of the chassis. Okay, yeah, so the CPU and GPU are underneath um, that heatsink. I wasn't sure if they were on the back and then it just used this to kind of spread the heat along with this on the back. That kind of would have been stupid. So <laughs> not surprised that that's not how they did it. So we can get rid of this now. And we are just left with the board. And we got a little tiny, um, I'm guessing this is a thermal transfer pad to kind of conduct some of this ground plane to the chassis. I think that's what that's for. CMOS battery slot right here. That's where this little battery that was right here originally was. Obviously this is not going to fit into a GameCube as is. Um, I'm gonna have to look at doing trims obviously. I don't even know if most of the front of this board is necessary. And I'm probably not going to go with the smallest trim I can get away with just because I don't need to. So I don't have to um, relocate as much stuff and solder to little tiny crappy places I don't want to solder to. Can we include the DVD drive? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Probably no. Okay, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for joining me on some of my thoughts on how I'm going to be doing this one and uh, the general disassembly and commentary and all that good stuff. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. And before I go, I wanted to give a specific shout out to Patreon members Tyler Shepard and Kiznavier Systems for being $10 Bringus Council board members. I always appreciate the support that I get from my audience and I'm really thankful for those of you that choose to show up with a Patreon membership. You can get small progress updates over there weeks in advance of when I show things off on YouTube. So if that sounds like something you'd want to see, then click the link in the description. And I can't forget to give thanks to PCBWay, my first real sponsor and the sponsor of today's video. If you were interested in any of the services that I outlined earlier, you should really check out their website. They do a lot more than you might realize. It's really not just PCBs. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.